Welcome to another CEO Wisdom Pod. We have Thanos Spellas with us. He's CEO of Thespellas.com in Athens, Greece. I'm in Oaxaca, Mexico. We're going to talk about automations today, Monday.com, which is a full software uh, that I used to use uh, for various reasons. Uh, this podcast is brought to you by Podfire.com. If you want to start uh, your own podcast and scale it, go to Podfire.com. Uh, Thanos, welcome to Bond. Tell me a bit more about yourself and what you're up to nowadays. Amazing. Hey, Charles. Hey, everyone. Thank you for having me. So I'm Thanos. I started the company around three, three, three and a half years ago. And we do digitalization. We do automation. We invest in innovation and we try to help teams and companies go forward. Uh, our main, we're a core partner of Mind.com, which Charles mentioned. Um, we work on complicated projects and we try to help teams digitize and organize their processes and essentially assist them into communicating more effectively, working together more effectively and altering the future of how people work. So why are you so bullish on Monday.com? So good question. Uh, I've been actually working with Monday.com for almost six years now. And I've I, uh, when I started first using it, I, I checked other software as well. And I did that again when I started the company. And what I found was that Monday actually came through on every promise that they made to me. So, you know, when I first met them, it was a much smaller company. They said four to six new features a week. And I've been seeing four to six new features a week for the past six years. It's been, it's been hard to keep up with them and learn them. But what I can say is that they're invested in the long-term success of my clients. And one of the most important things for me is not to just deliver a project, but, but to work with clients together for a long time, to build in their success, to help them achieve more. And so Monday is an amazing partner on that. And when too much features become too much features, because someone that is new to the platform might feel confused with all of these features, how do they help with that? Or how do you help with that? Awesome. Yeah. So essentially what I always advise uh, the teams that we work with is Monday's very easy to start, but of course, the bigger the platform and the more products that come out, the bigger platform becomes, the harder it becomes to master it. So what we advise is play around, understand a little bit, but then bring the experts, us, to uh, set up a robust architecture, make it scalable, and then slowly we can work with the champions, work with the stakeholders so that they have a journey that is as involved, they're as involved as they want, and we are as involved as we as they want us to be, so that we can help them achieve more. And what magic can you do with uh, Monday.com? What are specific use cases? Because I still haven't found the use of a CRM to my uh, small and agile companies up to this day. Mm -hmm. So Monday is very flexible. We we've worked tens of industries first uh, on our team. And in general, Monday spans 200 industries and 200,000 clients. So it can address every need you can imagine. You can go to HR and streamline onboarding, uh, automate communications or receiving CVs. You can go to sales and uh, understand how uh, manage your, your accounts, manage your leads, being able to create a full experience. I think the most important thing when we're using Monday is not just utilizing one um, one piece of it, but how it all works together. So it's not just, okay, I have a CRM that has my, my companies that I work with or my contacts, but it actually connects with the projects that I'm running. It actually connects with collections for finance. So it helps everyone be on top of everything. And when we go to mid-level or to senior management, it helps them have an insight and oversight of how all the, all the things are working. And how do they rank up uh, next to competitors? I believe there's ClickUp that is going quite strong nowadays. Mm -hmm. So and with regards to work management, uh, Monday is top on G2 and uh, rated uh, for uh, some time now. And then when it goes to CRM, Monday is uh, top five as well and going up against uh, the big powerhouses like Salesforce, et cetera. I see that they changed their prices as well. Um, they went from like 30 bucks per seat to 190 bucks per seat. What happened there? 
that's that's not really that's not really accurate. So uh, the the cost per seat has increased, but not not that big. Essentially, they they uh, there was a price increase, and the the reason behind it or uh, is that all those new developments that are coming out uh, in the world of uh, software as a service, uh, everything uh, everything goes up. And so it, it was just to maintain uh, quality and uh, to be able to keep expanding the platform. But if you're talking, for example, about the pro plan, the, the pricing on the users uh, was to the tune of uh, closer to uh, $3 per user per month on the pro plan as opposed to a massive amount. Right. Well, I did remember a time where it was literally 50 bucks per two seats uh, with Monday.com. I know because I was looking at them about three years ago to implement them on my agency. So I think they, they had a drastic pivot there. Uh, and I'm 95% sure I'm not wrong here. Um, so I'm happy to uh, to discuss and align exactly. So Monday hasn't changed their prices actually in three years. Now is the the first time that it's being changed uh, this year. And so uh, there was never a two seat plan. You have a three seat plan, five seat plan. So you can be paying, it also depends on the money plan that you are on. So essentially uh, if there is, if you're uh, inquiring about one of the biggest plans, if you're more interested today in the enterprise plan, that might be also cause for a uh, different pricing. Interesting, I'll fact check that, um, who knows now. If I'm, you know, like, um, and what is work management? You meant you mentioned that. Um, what does that mean specifically? It's like, from what I understood, it's like stats. If you're a manager and you want stats on your companies and your employees' output, you that's the usefulness of Monday.com and work management, quote unquote. Right. So, uh, very good question. Uh, thank you. So essentially, work management is a very flexible way to define how processes within a company run. So imagine that, uh, let's pick a department, let's pick, for example, the operations department. You have, um, first of all, you have tasks or projects that you're running. So it is a way to manage the tasks, manage the projects. And then that extends to, for example, we're running agile, so we're running on sprints. And then how do I manage my sprints? How do I manage uh, the velocity of my team, how do I manage their workload? It can extend, depending on the department or the method of working you break down uh, that each team or company works with. It can be how your KPIs break down into action items and roll up and how do you track against them? How do you, um, how do you manage uh, strategical uh, objectives for the company? Depending on the department, there is different implementations and work management is flexible enough that we can go and build a customized solution so that every company can have the capability to go and say, hey, you know what, here's a few things, here's how we work, here's how we want to work, okay, let's build it so that the people can actually work through it. It makes the, the team more streamlined, and at the same time, it helps manage the whole team or the, the collaboration between teams. And where do you come into that equation? I see training, I see coaching, so what do you offer to what kind of client? Right, right. So we have, uh, as a team, we have a variety of clients. We've gone from uh, smaller SMBs to uh, very large companies. And um, the offering varies, of course, but uh, we offer a full a full journey. So depending on where the team stands with regards to their digitalization of their processes, we, we have the capability to do workshops or blueprint what they do so that we can sit down and work together, understand their processes, map them out and make them streamlined so we can bring them into the platform. One of the most important points we try to bring up is it's not just let's take the process as it is and put it in a software. Otherwise, you're getting manual chaos and creating digital chaos. The goal is to help streamline and organize as we go so that the, whatever software is used, in this case, uh, matter of comb, we have the capability to use it effectively. So we can do the mapping or the blueprinting of the processes, then comes and then we go into iteration phase. So once we know what we're going to be building, uh, we work uh, through iteration. We gather the feedback from our clients so that we can uh, build it in. And so we're starting to set the project. We bring them into it uh, from very early. And then through what they say, we incorporate it into, uh, into their custom solution all the way to having, uh, having a solution that works for them. 
we try to not overload the solution. Uh, oftentimes you'll see very complicated solutions and projects that take months upon months to build. So we try to do the opposite. We try to manage the change that we're bringing to an organization. So instead, let's build something that helps you get from point zero to point uh, zero point one to point one, and then let's utilize the partnership that we're building. So when you're ready, we can go to level two, level three, level four. This also helps. This helps people understand how things are working, and this gives them the flexibility to not not fear change, but to embrace it as well as gives the space to the to the budget holders to be able to say, okay, now I think it's time we can get value from integrating. So how does uh, our partnership with a potential client continue? We implement through iteration, we deliver, we train on platform and on solution, and then we transition on a consistent success model where we can go, uh, when, when we consult on, uh, on a recurring basis on how they can improve their processes, how we can automate some parts of it, how we can integrate potentially their different uh, processes or software so that it all flows better and better for them. And what do you charge to these clients? Uh, good question. That uh, that strongly depends on, uh, um, on what we're building. So if we're talking about uh, a project basis, it can be anywhere from anywhere minimum from uh, three to five k, and then all the way to depending on how complicated it is, and then depending on uh, depending on how many, how big, and how many their needs are, we we create we create custom offers that address their address their requirements. How much clients do you run on per roster, and are they recurring clients, or do they eventually leave after the project is done? Mm -hmm. So as uh, so we I think we're at around 150 clients uh, right now and constantly glow, growing our client base. Um, so essentially we have uh, our goal with most of the clients is to maintain the partnership and relationship. Obviously, it's uh, the projects are front heavy. So the first the build is the first build is where you're going and you're creating things for them. But the goal is to try and provide value. So because what we do is not just creating a system for them, but also consulting on process or consulting on management. Essentially, where th what that leads into is we learn their processes and we learn the specificities of each organization. So as time goes on, we can help them more and more. That is through managing, gathering data from the processes and being able to provide insights, trying to suggest some insights that they might be useful to them, trying to find ways that through automation they can gain more value out of their processes. So most of our clients are uh, are recurring to the tune of we're trying to keep helping them and to streamline the the onboarding uh, journey as opposed to just pushing everything up, up front. So these 150 clients, they pay you per month or? No, it's, uh, it's very dependent and flexible. So essentially you can say uh, we have clients that just come back like once every six months. We have clients that pay us every every month, it really depends on the client's needs. So uh, this depends on how complex their business is and also how big the, the company is. So a company that's uh, 15 people, usually they might have, uh, they might have a, bucket, uh, a bucket of support hours where they can utilize flexibly for further automation, for consulting, for integration. Bigger companies usually will want, uh, will want that retainer service where they'll know we're engaged for, for them for two hours a week or for four hours a month or whatever to be able to provide them consistent value. So how much employees do you have? Because 150 employees seems a, a lot to manage. Uh, yeah. So right now we are eight people. The team is constantly growing and uh, I don't sleep very much uh, at this point in my life. <laughs> um, do you sometimes wish you'd have like a SaaS a la monday.com because the agency model doesn't scale that much. Um, are you thinking about like a more recurring product? Right. So I think that, uh, first of all, not precisely, I wouldn't build technology myself from scratch. I would be interested in working with people that are building technologies. And we do this with some of our clients as well as some of our of our partners or vendors that we engage into the building process. But uh, I think that it's uh, more than the issue with scaling. And yes, some 
so their recurring revenue does come from some of the bigger clients, but I think more so this is the way that we're done on the ground that we can engage with businesses. We can uh, be part of their success. And this is something I really truly enjoy understanding and how we help uh, different teams, how being part of their journey. So um, I think I'm happy with, uh, with how we're doing it today. So what do you have insights for this year in terms of goals? Right. Um, cool. So a few goals. Uh, number one, uh, we want to keep growing our clientele and uh, providing value to more teams and companies. Of course, uh, we have um, we we recently became an advanced delivery partner for Monday, which means we handle the complicated and complex pro and uh, and big projects. And our goal is to to evolve to the to the highest tier of partnership with regards to Monday per se. Then um, we have uh, we have goals with regards to our internal team. So we are uh, trying to practice what we preach by streamlining and uh, bringing more, va more value to our internal process as well. So what we're trying to do, one of our goal, of one of my core goals for the first uh, half of 2024, is to have robust processes internally per department, so that the people that are coming in can actually grow and they can plug in so we have uh, i have a goal of hiring uh four to five more people in the next uh eight months so this is also um of course dependent on how we're growing but i'm finding that uh the big problem of the agency model is that you it's it takes a lot of time to bring people in make them part of the team so what I'm trying to to invest in is trying to create the the um, the roots of something of something bigger and more successful, and uh, we're also working with uh, with other software. So we have Make, we have Ercole, and we have LastPass. And our goal is to be able to to help our clients see efficiencies throughout uh, different uh, different needs or products, as opposed to. Uh, to focusing just on one region. So both through the products of monitor home, such as CRM, dev, work management, and through our uh, different pro our, uh, our other, other partnerships, trying to find more and more value that we can offer to our uh, to the complex that we work with. And what challenges have you faced in the last couple of years as a CEO? Uh, many, thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you for this. Uh, so number one, uh, setting up the starting a company was uh was never my my original dream or goal so it just uh it just started and it just evolved in a way that um i had to learn so many things uh, so fast i think you understand this i think uh everyone that's been through this understands this uh a core challenge was understanding uh understanding a bit uh how uh, how to set up teams to work together. I'm very, I'm very heavy on camp company culture. How our teams are, are happy, they're successful, they're growing, and they're achieving. And so, uh, finding the right balance between how teammates uh work, plug into the team. How do you have uh more experienced people that are plugging in part time to come in versus how do you grow an organic team? And how do you make sure that everyone is uh is on a route that is good for them, good for their um uh good for them in all in all aspects i think uh another challenge that has been uh that i'm starting to resolve now is uh resolve like setting up uh a consistent uh, sales model so we started a lot with um so because i'm very technically um uh I lean very technical as a person. So my background is in IT, my background is in analytics, et cetera. It was very easy for me to sell based on expertise, but that makes it very hard to sell, uh, to build a sales team and to, to scale upon it. So one of the hardest thing, uh, challenges is setting up uh, um, a recurring, uh, a, a predictable, uh, predictable revenue and the way we the way i'm approaching this is right now i we've started different pillars to help us uh help us bring in more leads and clients through word of mouth through referrals through partnerships through uh, marketing but also um uh, through community building and participation but we're also uh now onboarding uh 
outbound account, they are executives with onboarded uh, one teammate, and uh, the goal is to onboard one more in the next few months to be able to to have the predictability from the sales team and the market and the the market the paid marketing, so that the rest can just plug in where it's where it's required. Well, very cool. Thank you so much for the value you've added today. Where can people find out more about you, Thanos? Awesome. Thank you. So uh, we have two websites. Number one is thespellos.com. This is more about our company in general. And number two is workos.thespellos.com. This is more dedicated on Monday, our partnership and our value that we offer through the specific platform, uh, platform and the products of Monday. And then essentially, you can find me on LinkedIn. You can find me uh, pretty much uh, anywhere uh, anywhere that it, um, there is enterprise, there's business discussions. I'm uh, uh, you're, you're probably going to find me there.